is Professor George Sledge from Stanford University, so from Stanford University School of Medicine, and they will present the data of the Monarch II trial. Please. Thank you, GSF. It's a, a, a great pleasure to be here this morning to uh, present and share with you some uh, survival data from the Monarch II trial. Uh, Monarch II is a trial that looked at the combination of abemocyclib and fulvestrant in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancers. For some disclosure information. So here's the study design for Monarch II. Monarch II was a trial that looked at patients who had, as I mentioned, hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer. These patients could be pre, peri, or postmenopausal. They were defined as having endocrine therapy resistance, which is to say they had either relapsed on neoadjuvant or on or within one year of adjuvant endocrine therapy, or they had progressed on frontline endocrine therapy for advanced breast cancer. Uh, these patients had received no chemotherapy for advanced breast cancer. They could have had no more than one prior endocrine therapy for advanced breast cancer, and they all had, had a good performance status. Patients were randomized two to one to receive either the combination of abemocyclib and fulvestrant in the dose and schedule shown here, or to receive a placebo with fulvestrant. The primary endpoint of the trial, which we presented two years ago at ASCO, was uh, investigator-initiated progression-free survival. Uh, the main point of this uh, presentation will be overall survival, though we'll also be looking at some interesting uh, exploratory endpoints such as time to chemotherapy. Patients entering this trial were stratified based upon metastatic site, uh, whether or not they had visceral or bone-only disease, and, and on whether or not they had primary or secondary endocrine resistance. The data cutoff was June of this year. The median follow-up is approaching four years. 17% of patients on the combination arm versus 4% of patients uh, on the placebo arm uh, remained on treatment. So this is the updated progression-free survival. It's very similar in terms of the medians to the progression-free survival that reported two years ago. I would say the major point of interest uh, on this slide in, ter in terms of update is that if you look at a landmark analysis at three years, what you see is roughly three times as many patients on the combination arm are still on therapy compared to patients on the fulvestrin alone arm, 29.9% versus 10.1%. Um, here's probably the most important thing uh, in this presentation. This is overall survival. If we look at patients who receive the combination of abemocyclib plus fulvestrin, median overall survival is 46.7 months. In the placebo plus fulvestrin arm, median overall survival is 37.3 months. So this is a 9.4 month improvement in terms of overall survival, uh, which is both uh, statistically significant, uh, uh, but also I, I would argue uh, clinically relevant and important for patients with advanced breast cancer. Uh, the hazard ratio here is 0.757. We did an exploratory analysis looking at time to chemotherapy. I think uh, if you were to ask the average breast cancer patient, would they prefer to be on an endocrine therapy or on a chemotherapy, I, I don't think you would, you would get many doubters for remaining on endocrine therapy as opposed to going on chemotherapy. So in this trial, we looked at uh, uh, time uh, to chemotherapy. Uh, there's a median for the combination of 50.2 months versus 22.1 months uh, for the placebo plus fulvestrin arm. So some conclusions. Um, the addition of abemocyclib to fulvestrin provided a statistically significant overall survival improvement in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer who had progressed on a prior endocrine therapy. The median overall survival benefit was 9.4 months. Um, this overall survival benefit is consistent across subgroups, including patients with poor prognostic factors such as visceral metastasis and primary endocrine therapy resistance. 17% of patients in the abema arm remained on treatment versus 4% in the placebo arm with a median follow-up of, of approaching four years. Abema cyclops significantly delayed the receipt of subsequent chemotherapy in an exploratory analysis. Uh, not shown, but uh, 
you'll have to take my word from it until you see the actual presentation. The safety profile was consistent with what we presented uh, two years ago. <laughs> Uh, we have ongoing follow-up of Monarch II uh, to further characterize the overall survival benefit and some of the exploratory uh, efficacy endpoints. So thank you all very much, and I'll turn things over to Dr. Slayman. Thanks a lot. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Slayman from University of California, Los Angeles, and they, he will present the final date of overall survival of Monarch.